Hello guys, welcome to Connect Radiology. So when I was in my final year, all these imaging were more confusing to me. It was more of a rote learning than actually understanding it. Or perhaps there was no one who could simplify this to me. So I thought I would make radiology easy and more fun stuff for you. So today's topic is quite easy. It's about barium study. Before discussing anything about barium, let me tell you about the procedure first. So what we do here? Actually, here we make the patient ingest barium sulfate suspension and then we take x-rays at different time intervals depending on the type of study and what we want to see and then we interpret the x-ray images. Next, I am going to discuss what you should know about the barium study. So first thing, we use barium sulfate suspension here. Not any other form, remember, as they are toxic. Your question should be, why we use barium? So here, barium is acting as a contrast agent. Contrast so as to enhance any organ or structure within the body. Here, in case of barium sulfate, it is used for gastrointestinal tract related studies. In fact, barium sulfate is the most common contrast media used for GI studies. You should ask me why most common? Because barium is an inert compound and it doesn't interfere with normal digestion and absorption. Next, you should know barium sulfate is a positive contrast media. Positive as it attenuates or blocks the X-rays significantly stronger than the body's soft tissues. So it appears white on X-ray film, thus making us able to see different structures on X-ray films as white. You can understand it by the analogy. It's just like the bones which appear white on X-ray film as they block the X-rays. Actually, barium atoms absorb X-rays of wavelength 0.02 to 0.3 nanometers equal to that used in diagnostic radiology. So, barium study is a diagnostic radiology tool. So, we got the idea about the procedure and how barium works. Now, types. Types based on what structure we want to see. So, the first type is barium swallow. Here, we make the patient ingest barium paste and then take x-rays Then this paste is in the GIT till G junction. Thus, it makes us able to see the hyperparynx, the esophagus and the G-junction. The second type is barium meal. Here, we make the patient ingest 95% weight by volume barium sulfate and then take the time the x-ray. What we can see here is the stomach and the proximal duodenum. Third type is barium meal follow through. Here, we make the patient ingest 50% weight by volume barium sulfate and take x-rays at every 30-minute interval. We will be able to see the small intestine, particularly the jejunum and the edium. Jejunum is identified by the complete ring-like holes and edium lacks these features. And the fourth type is barium enema. Here we give enema that is give 25% weight by volume barium sulfate through the anus and take timely x-rays. We would be able to see the large bowel that is colon. We will discuss these types in more detail in the next video. Now we know the type, we should know when not to use barium, that is contraindication. So the first contraindication is perforation, okay? Because barium sulfate is water insoluble and if we use it in case of perforation, it will definitely leak out and cause severe chemical peritonitis. The second contraindication is allergic reaction. If anyone is having known allergy to barium, we should avoid this as it can cause severe anaphylaxis reaction and even death. The third contraindication is tracheoesophageal fistula for similar reasons as there is connection between the trachea and the esophagus. And the fourth contraindication is left colon obstruction as it can form complex with the feces and aggravate the obstruction. We should know that whenever, wherever, barium sulfate can't be used in GIT, we use iodinated compounds 
For example, in case of perforation, we use iodine. In case of tracheal fissure, we use iodine.